Durham Region. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Securing your recycling in a few steps is simple, like bundling your cardboard separately. These bundles can act as a lid for your blue box or placing heavier items such as magazines on top of papers with no material above the rim. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk Politics. I'm Deborah Hutchison in the Rogers TV studio on this July 16th, 2020. Our guest this week joining us via Zoom is Whitby Mayor Don Mitchell. Welcome back to the show. It's been a while since we've uh, had the opportunity to converse. How are you? Yeah, um, doing fine. It's, uh, as everyone knows, a hot, dry summer. So uh, that makes everything a little more challenging, I think. Yeah. Now, so we are recording this Thursday, July the 16th. Um, mm -hmm. We are still in stage two, not in stage three. Uh, is there the anticipation that we will soon be there? Yeah, it sounds like uh, we could go into stage three quite soon. Um, maybe the start of next week. I've even heard some people suggest tomorrow, but but uh, I believe it's close, yes. Uh, before we get into uh, our conversation about uh, COVID-19 and the, and the effect on, on Whitby, um, I, I wanna quickly talk about um, the tragic accident uh, at Brock Street and Canary, uh, where a cyclist uh, died in a, uh, a collision. Um, residents in that area tell us that um, they've had concerns about that particular intersection for, for quite a, a long time and that it warrants, they see it, um, for a traffic light. What's the process uh, when it comes to determining whether there's stop signs or whether it, there is a, a traffic light? So <clears throat> there are a system of, they call them warrants, um, that uh, look at the, the function of the two roads and look at the flows of traffic. And then they determine if there is enough uh, side flow relative to the main flow to warrant some, uh, some additional traffic control. Um, they have been doing counts at, let me back up a step first and just say that uh, uh, my deepest condolences to the family of Mr. Mitchell, that's, uh, uh, that's a terrible, terrible thing to happen and uh, very, very sad. Um, and traffic safety is a, you know, a really large concern and cyclist safety. And um, we, we are supporting the regional Vision Zero program and, and we are adding, uh, you know, safe off-road facilities for cyclists. And uh, there is actually a facility uh, that runs along a sidewalk, multi-use path that, that runs along Baldwin on the on the east side uh, in that location. But for Canary, for example, uh, the region takes does those uh, checks on on vehicle counts to do them twice a year, actually. Because uh, Brock, Brock is a regional road, right? It is not correct. under Whippy's uh, jurisdiction. Yes. Actually, technically Baldwin there, not Brock, right. but. Um, so it, it is regional, so, so they do the warrants uh, and uh, uh, the information from, uh, from the region is that the warrants are not uh, met at the intersection, not, not actually even being close to being met. Um, and there's another intersection that has come up a lot as well, which is Glengow over at Fixit, for the same concern. It's a community in there with, with no signalizations. Uh, <clears throat> so in both of those cases, uh, those roads will be widened. Uh, the widening usually results in um, the warrants being met and, and traffic lights being installed. And I would anticipate that in both locations, but that's not planned until 2024 uh, at Canary. So the, um, and there will be other locations with the same, um, same complication of the warrants being met because it's a, region-wide policy on the warrants. They're very strict about what they contribute financially to to the lights, which are you know reasonably expensive. 
And if it's not warranted, you know, they can say it's okay, but it is the funding all falls on the town rather than, rather than the region. So, um, it, again, you, you know, you hate to talk about money in the context of, uh, of a tragic incident like that, but uh, that's something we grapple with. And you also grapple with if you move away from the warrants, then um, you're installing them on the basis of uh, uh, of something else, which is not based on, on on the traffic movements. But I agree that a left turn out of there is can be very difficult at certain times. A left turn out of Glen Valley can be very difficult at times as well. So the, the region and the town are looking now if there are other measures. And of course, a, a light is always a consideration, a town funded light. Uh, it would be, uh, I would say, well in excess of a couple of hundred thousand dollars. And it would basically uh, cover three years because when that road is widened in 2024, Paul, when that is, uh, the work that's done now would, would be all removed and, and replaced. Um, so it's. Um, it would be for a three-year term. So that's the context it's in, and it certainly is very difficult for, for everyone when this situation happens, especially because we're very focused on cyclist and pedestrian safety. And having said that, let me just say that I, I would be uh, inspector, uh, inspector Moot. As soon as this happened, I, I asked for details. Uh, of the of the accident and he um, said the investigation is still ongoing and the details won't be available um, until it's concluded so I still do not as we speak today have the the details from the police investigation because uh, I assume it's not concluded. So in general if a community or if a, a neighborhood feels that an intersection um, is unsafe and there are issues with it, uh, what should they be doing? What is the, the, the process? Well, you just contact the town uh, staff, or in this case, the region, any member of council or myself, and staff will go out and, and review it and see, uh, you know, take actual counts and see if there can be changes made that can improve it. And there's, a, there's a, you know, different options that can be implemented depending upon what's making the intersection uh, unsafe. And uh, again, the, the region right now is looking at, at Canary to see if there are uh, interim options that can make it safer. Um, we did reduce the speed limit along there uh, a year or two back, both there and in Fixin down, down to 60. Uh, which should slow the traffic, but uh, with the lighter traffic now, it seems to be going faster mm -hmm. than uh, than it, it was formerly. Of course, uh, actually, one of the great s slower downers of traffic is is road congestion, and certainly, I've spoken a number of times with uh, Inspector Mood again, and uh, you know, the traffic unit. There's a lot of demand on all the traffic units, but um, you know, the, we really want the the police out there to ensure that that the, it is traveling at the posted speed, which would really help a lot in, in this type of situation as at Canary and Glengowan. Okay, uh, so let's move on to uh, COVID-19 and we are now, Durham is in stage two, soon to be in stage three. Um, and there has been a lot of work to help businesses <clears throat> in our downtown and everywhere um, reopen. Number one has been the patio spaces. It's been, the process has been expedited and a lot of Whitby restaurants are taking advantage of that. And people are going to the restaurants. Yeah, I think there's 26 uh, patios now and uh, half a dozen more uh, to be approved shortly is my understanding. And uh, I was uh, downtown uh, last week and it was a 20 minute wait to get on to get on to the, the ones in downtown uh, Whitby, which uh, which is a really good sign. Mm -hmm. So so that's good. People want to get out and, 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 you know, socialize and are comfortable with the environment they're socializing in. So so hopefully we'll get the same positive response in, in stage three as we move indoors because we really need to get uh, the businesses uh, back open, back working, and working on a financially 
viable and sustainable basis. Um, uh, because uh, uh, the longer they go, the harder it is, and it's a long time to catch up on, on some of these payments and, and so on and so forth. So the town's working very, very closely with them. Our, our Chamber of Commerce is doing a great job. Our BIA is doing a great job in, in downtown Whitby, and everybody's working very collaboratively together. Uh, we had a good meeting this morning. We have a, an economic recovery team in Whitby, and uh, we had a great discussion about a report that will be coming out uh, in September, um, you know, looking at our Whitby strategy as part of the overall Durham region strategy to, uh, you know, to, to recover effectively and sustainably uh, and get going. So uh, I, I think I think we'll do pretty well. We've... Uh, you know, we've got a lot of people who want to get out and, and want to support their stores. And, and, and as the opportunity is increasingly available, uh, I'm sure they will do it. And uh, there's a lot of whippy pride at work, and, uh, and we got a great team on it. Uh, there is also a pedestrian zone uh, downtown, too. I love that idea. Yeah, well, they put in the, the, the zone sort of in front of the, the bistro, uh, the, the the coffee shop or espresso, Brock Street Espresso, which is a great store. So that just gives people more room for uh, for sitting, you know, for waiting to get in the stores. And then we have the 15-minute pickups, the curbside pickup areas, so that can be done quickly and safely and easily in the traffic flow. And uh, again, according to uh, Natalie from the Chamber and Carrie from the BIA, uh, Carrie was with us when we were down there last week, uh, it's been well received and, and, uh, and the restaurants are doing well as well as can can be expected with the takeout but you know you need to you need to move back into more than takeout to you know to really uh, carry on sustainably but uh, but it's been a good interim measure and well supported by our, our downtown economics development staff okay we just have about a minute before we have to go to break um, still in stage two soon to be in stage three um, summer camps cancellation there have been you know a lot of changes for the summer um, if we move from stage two to stage three those summer camps will they get they're done right for this for the summer canceled well we're doing a, we the decision was made and it was a hard decision that it was just too too difficult to try and fashion a, you know an actual camp too many uncertainties because you have to you know you have to ramp up to do that you have to hire people you have to do a lot of things so we, we did virtual camps so I would not think they would reopen um the sort of big question that keeps coming up is you know are there going to be ice sports um when they reopen and it's kind of a who goes first thing uh, we're happy to we can provide the ice what's really uncertain is what users uh, are prepared to run the league and uh, and under what guidelines and how that will operate so that's a a really big question going forward because uh, you know most ice sports involve proximity and contact, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not sure how you function those otherwise. But certainly, huge, huge thing for especially you know the kids in, in organized sports. That's just a this is a big part of their lives and of their yeah growing I'm, up. I'm going to yeah. hold you there, Mayor. We're going to go to a quick break. More on talk politics after this. Thank you. Securing your recycling in a few steps is simple, like crushing your cans and bottles down in your container's blue box and your box board down in your paper's box. This saves a lot of space and reduces the possibility of material blowing out of your blue box on windy days. It was John's graduation. We were so proud. We all got together for a picnic. That's when we heard coming from the radio. So we stopped and we listened. It helped us get to safety. That's why when I think of I think of John, because now he has a real future to look forward to. Hi, I'm Marjorie Mason, and I love to garden and to share gardening advice with other folks who'd like to learn more about gardening. 
And uh, I invite you to join Jeff and I each week as we take you through the garden season in our own garden. If you have questions you, that are worrying you and you'd like advice, please feel free to send them to the website. And we'll answer them on Let's Get Growing Only on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Talk Politics. Our guest this week is Whitby Mayor Don Mitchell. Uh, we were talking about um, COVID-19 and some of the tough choices uh, over the summer that have had to be made. Um, you know, splash pads are now open. Are the playgrounds? Uh, no, we uh, were allowed to open splash pads uh, a couple of weeks back. And, uh, you know, there are a number of guidelines around them, but the, the direction that we took was to open all of them. Um, and, and that's been uh, very well received, you know, again, because the weather's so hot. Mm -hmm. So far as I know, there's been no incidents or concerns that, that I am aware of at the splash pads. Um, playground equipment is still closed by provincial measure as we speak. However, I was uh, speaking with, uh, with Dr. Kyle and his interpretation of the stage three is that we can now reopen playground equipment. Um, so I, I assume that will happen, uh, but um, I, I believe council would, you know, we, we would have to discuss that as a council certainly, because we did initially close playground equipment by a council, council direction. And certainly there, there are still residents out there who are very concerned about the use of playground equipment. And, um, um, you know, when there's, it's, it's an ongoing discussion and generally still, uh, I, I find it a civil and responsible discussion, but there are, you know, different perspectives on how to move forward into the next steps, which, which are really challenging. You know, when you talk about the steps around schools and minor sports and anything involving uh, our children, who absolutely have to be the, the first priority in, in my view, the, uh, our top priority and considering what is the appropriate uh, way to move forward. And you know, you and I know young children, I mean, it's older children, they understand the importance of masks and coughing into their, you know, their, their elbows and, and, and taking those precautions, but younger kids, no matter how much you tell them and how much you guide them, in the end, they're young kids. Yeah, and uh, you're right. I, I, I don't think you're going to be able to create an environment for young children where there is not contact, um, you know, and the risk of exposure and the risk of, of transmission. Um, the sort of factors there that, I mean, we've, we've been moving forward basically in an attempt to keep everyone from getting the virus forever. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is viewed as the, you know the best way to protect the vulnerable, and it's that's the you know the elderly, uh, elderly, and particularly the 80 plus elderly with other health complications. Um, certainly, in tw in uh, under the under 20 category to date, um, it indicates there's very very low risk to anyone under 20. I mean, even if they if they get the virus, there's there's all low risk of. Um, a, a serious outcome, medical outcome. So that heavy weighting is still there, and 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 that's that's sort of the next challenge is how do you deal with the fact that the virus hits different age categories very differently? Mm -hmm. It transmits to all of them, though actually some suggest it's children aren't as likely to get it as well as not being likely at all to have a severe outcome. So that's that's the thing I'm sure that the Premier and his team are wrestling with um, as you try and devise a plan for school and, and our school boards. But uh, keeping young children apart in any environment is, uh, I think you can assume that's not gonna happen, yes. 
so over the summer, because you know things change on a dime, um, will council continue to meet? Yeah, we have a meeting on July 20th. Um, uh, and we have met, like our processes have not slowed down. We've continued to deliver all our services with the exception of the recreation related services that were shut down by the provincial orders. So, um, yeah, well, there's a lot going on in town and a lot of applications being processed and uh, certainly, especially in terms of the housing sector, very, very strong and a lot of activity and, and not just in Whitby, right across the region. Uh, the, the, housing, the, the housing industry has, uh, is very optimistic that people are going to want to buy a lot of houses uh, in Whitby and across the region. So, so that will certainly be a driver of a lot of jobs and a lot of activity for quite a while, which is, which is a very positive thing at this time. Are, is Town Hall open once again to residents? No, it's not, not open yet. Um, so they're working on that plan and uh, we'll work that through stage three, but uh, I expect we will be open uh, certainly before September 1st for, uh, you know, for people to, to come in and visit and, and they'll, they'll be developing guidelines on, on staff behavior in downtown, particularly with respect to the when and where you use uh, masks because the, the mask order is not mandatory on municipal town halls, but we certainly want to have it in the public service areas and we want to arrange other, uh, you know, staff, internal staff activities and council activities, because I'm sure we'll go back to in-person meetings with distancing. Um, and we want to arrange those to ensure that, uh, that we're making sure there's no risk of transmission you know, in the staff environment or, or in the fact that council members are at town hall. But it has been working very well with your virtual meetings, has it not? Well, I guess a qualified yes. It's been working better than I would expect. Uh, I just think a, a lot is lost um, without the person-to-person -person contact, you know, in, a, in every sort of communication, including meetings. And I think people are fatigued with virtual meetings and, um, and, and, and fatigued with, with virtual contact, if you will. Um, and it's, it's challenging and in, and in many ways it's inefficient in terms of, you know, just getting things done. It's, you know, we did a lot more. We had a, you know, an hour and a half meeting this morning on the economic recovery plan and just having four, four people in the room interacting is just such a, it's a much more constructive and, and engaged, um, environment than, you know, than virtual meetings. I have to, one of the things that the town has done, of course, with, with garbage due to COVID-19 is you are allowing residents up to six bags. Um, will that, how long will that continue for? Well, that was based on uh, a lot of people not working. And, and so there were more people coming into the same households and, and yeah. they're long. So the garbage is being created at home. So that relief was provided. So we're not sure when that will change. There's no rush to change it as we speak. Um, but as the economy picks up uh, and gets closer to where it was in terms of people going out working, we probably go back to the, to the four bag limit, but that's yet to be decided. Well, I can tell you that it has been very much appreciated in our household. Uh, some of the other, you know, more positive things that are coming out of of Whitby as we, you know, are in stage two, moving to stage three. The farmer's market is back. Yes, that's good. Yeah, the farmer's market's great. So uh, there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of, it'll be interesting coming out of this, uh, what happens to the local food movement and to the food movement generally, because it's just interesting that people immediately, uh, when this started, people, they sold out of bread making machines and flour. And, so uh, there's been a real opportunity for, for people to become, you know, reacquainted with sort of slow food and, and how that will impact the awareness and support for, uh, you know, for the local food industry and, and food markets being, a, farmers markets being a big share of that. So uh, that's something that, that may be positive at the end of the day, that return to a focus on local, uh, more of a focus on local than before. Uh, so moving forward, um, 
you know, we're hearing a lot about municipalities and the economic impact. As you said, you have an economic uh, recovery group. Um, now, you, you said you've, you remain very positive about um, the outcome and Whitby's ability to bounce back, but it will be a challenge, will it not? Well, it will be a challenge. We have to remain very re responsible um, in terms of expenditures and hires and what we do, because certainly taxpayers will be expecting a very low to no uh, tax increase. Um, the, the sort of budgetary downside of all our new residential growth, there's, there's lots of upsides, but the budgetary downside is that uh, about a third of the capital cost of that new growth shifts to the property tax base, which is about a point, uh, 1.5 percent a year. So that's uh, just a downside of the way development charges are, are organized now. They're just they're just not sufficient however that's the way it is but we know there'll be a lot of pressure and that's why i've sort of emphasized when you look at the guidelines in, in, in phase two and phase three they have to they we have to end up with an outcome that is sustainable and viable for the businesses on an ongoing basis because the you know the the federal income support in particular has been extremely generous um but that will end at some point and um who knows when that point will be. So we can't build a, I don't think we can build a case of, you know, businesses carrying on forever supported by direct to federal support that I don't see that happening. So business viability um, and best practices, how to make it work and keep working. That's that's the big challenge that I think, uh, what we were talking about that this morning with the, the chamber and the BIA and uh, and all the partners that's that's the real focus uh, you know how is this going to maintain and stay viable on its own so we got a great business community uh, here and elsewhere in the region and we just have to support them to find ways to do that okay we've got less than a minute left but i want to ask you uh, in regards to to budget municipalities cannot operate with a deficit should they be able to no no i i, I now, if you get into uh, to debt one year, you're just you're just stuck the next year. I, I think the, the rules are right um, that that we have to find a way to balance it every single year and not run a deficit, and uh, and we will do that. Just uh, just harder and harder choices, but choices that have to be made. We we can't we we can't mortgage our future. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. We are out of time, believe it or not. Whitby Mayor Don Mitchell, thanks so much for taking the time to join us, and thanks to all of our viewers for taking the time to join us. Until next time, I'm Deborah Hutchison. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you, Deborah. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Blake. You can't see down with that thing. Mr. Blake. Jacques. What? They're coming. Hold them up. Find something. Jacques, I'm telling you for the last How time. Are the Canadians finished? This plan coming back on the hey, ice. Come on, come on. Give us something, will you? Please, How gentlemen. many stitches? Gentlemen, please. Go, go, hey, go. On November 1st, 1959, Jacques Plant of the Montreal Canadiens broke with tradition. You're a brave man, Mr. Plant, standing up to him like that and changed the face of hockey forever.